extra time. Porikar Google Hook, Baba Bouncer. Chaya Prakashani has the answer. Chaya Prakashani. Hello and welcome to the Extra Time Football Show. This is your very own Suman Chakravarti and today we have a very, very special guest with us. He's none other than the main sports scientist of Barclays Premier League side, Leicester City Football Club, Mr. Tom Joel. Tom, welcome to the Extra Time Football Show. Thank you very much. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah. Uh, Tom, uh, you have come to India and you're just doing a lot of workshops over here. So what is the main perspective which you are discussing over here with the young candidates? I think um, the, the main kind of concept that I was trying to bring across is that the the sports science as a, as a field, as a, as a practice, has developed in football and over the last 10, 15, 20 years maybe it's, it's come around, it's a big part of, of football nowadays, more at the elite level but also coming down through the academies and um, when I was first asked to come out and speak, one of the main things was about the kind of education and, and introducing different ideas and, and the principles behind what we do at Leicester trying to educate some, some of the coaches out here sorry some, educate some of the coaches out here as to what it is we're doing and um, obviously a couple of seasons ago we experienced great success and um, sports science I was proud to say that played a part in that and um, and hopefully I kind of brought some brought some insight into what we did and what we do few years sir uh, before you get uh, just just struggling in the lower divisions of uh, the League 2 or League 1 and so on. And then all of a sudden, uh, an amazing success like a Phoenix. So what was the journey calling to you? Yeah, a, a long journey, a long journey. I've been there for uh, six seasons. So I was there when we were in the championship. And like you say, we've, we've experienced, experienced a great kind of success. And um, it's, it's been really good. I think the, the main thing from my point of view is the culture the, that we kind of created at, at the club and that came from um, the, the managers and the coaching staff at the club um, back when we were in the championship they created this culture and this environment where everybody worked together and collaboratively so whether that's coaches, um, sports science staff, medical staff, players we were all working towards one goal it was nobody was Button heads or, or um, debating too much. It was all healthy educational, educational stuff. So, as we then developed, we got the the players to buy into what we wanted to do, the um, the kind of principles that we're stressing and, and, and advising on, and um, ultimately the coaches um, believed in what we were doing uh, as as sports scientists in in that side of things, making sure the players were were fit making sure they were they were able to perform and on the weekend and they're fresh not fatigued that kind of thing and um, and yeah over time it's it's developed it's developed massively so um, but yeah for me the main thing was the culture it started with that and the the kind of elements that the the coaches and the staff at that time brought and it flowed through and it came through towards the uh, towards obviously the success that we've had since then well, the likes of Drinkwater, the likes of Jimmy Verdi, the likes of uh, Red Mares, two, three years back, nobody knew them. Yes. And then, uh, an amicable success. Yeah. So, what's, what's the mystery behind that? I, I, don't, I don't think I could put my finger on one thing. It's, uh, it's obviously been, been crazy for, for them. I think um, what did show with them was the, when, when they came from you know, I think Riyadh costs something like two hundred and fifty thousand pounds, and he's now worth in excess of thirty million. So, Jamie Vardy, we we purchased for one million pounds. Danny Drinkwater, I think maybe one million pounds again, and now they're obviously huge, huge money signings. Um, Danny's obviously moved on to Chelsea, and he's, he's he went for about thirty-five million. And I think what was key to their progress was. Um, Again, then buying into all the different aspects that we were, we were embedded in the, the culture of the club. But then when it came to that season, the main season was their consistency. And um, Jamie scoring all those goals was great. 
you know, made such a difference to what we did. Riyad was setting up the goals or scoring the goals, and then and Danny was just um, was pivotal in the middle of the in the middle of the pitch, making things happen. I think um, that consistency is key. In terms of how they did that, obviously there's a lot of aspects that came into it. Hopefully, I'd, I'd like to think that making sure managing their fitness and fatigue helped in keeping them on the pitch and being able to to play throughout the whole season. Otherwise, you know, things like that might not have happened. And uh, I think you're very much in track with the FIFA U17 World Cup, which is going on. Yeah, yeah. And the India U17 team has been playing really well, mm -hmm. despite a lot of limitations and all that. So what would be your prescription as a sports scientist so that they can play in the senior level in the World Cup? I think, um, I think again, there's, there's, a, there's an element of... Um, Sports science principles can, can play a part at any, at any level. And I think as players are coming through from under 16, under 17, through to professional football or um, elite uh, adult football as such, they, um, there's things such as strength, power, development, obviously key vital components as players are growing and getting stronger. I think then it's up to the, the coaches that are working with them to, to manage how they're training them. So exposing them to different things in the right ways, in the correct manners, but then making sure that they're not overworking them, that they're going to break down and, and they'll become injured, and not underworking them, making sure that they're able to then go and perform on a weekend. And I think um, I spoke to a couple of um, people out here and they, they keep telling me that the way that India under-17s are playing, they're playing well, and they've played a little bit like how we played, very kind of direct and 4-4-2 stay nice and compact when we get the ball we try and break on the counter attack and I think um, as long as the players are, are able to perform in that way then they'll be able to do it and, and, and hopefully gain success. Well Claudio Ranieri he did a remarkable job with his Telecicity side then after winning uh, the Premier League he didn't get the same success in the next season then how difficult was that to sack him? Yes I mean um, probably a little bit above my my position but it was uh it was it was sad to see Claudio go like you say he'd done so much work with us um so much good work with us this season before and um I think a lot of elements came in there where we were playing in the the Champions League and we had a lot more games than than the season before so from my point of view that the management of of how we uh trained during the week in between the games and the development of fatigue and, and how it influenced the fitness was, was something that was quite difficult for us to manage. And um, we did our best and ultimately, you know, results weren't quite going our way and, and it, the manager, the manager um, suffers because of that. And it was, it was a real shame to see him go. Um, obviously now he's out in, in France and he's doing, doing good and I still stay in touch with his uh, conditioning coach, Andrea. So... Um, yeah, they're, they're back on track and they're doing well. You're just 26 and doing a lot of work. So what's the source of your energy and source of your determination at the age of just 26? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a, a, a drive with, within me. And I, I see it, the, the um, kind of intentions of all the coaches. Everybody wants to learn and everybody wants to develop themselves and then have an effect with the kids that they're working with or the, the players that they're working with. I think um, one of the spoke speakers talked about it earlier and they said about how um, sport drives, there's, a, there's a, a kind of innate drive when people are involved in sport. And I think that's what, personally, for me, that's that's what's um, driven me to, to get to the position that I'm, that I'm in. But then also I'm, I'm so eager to, to learn and um, discuss and, and develop, be educated by people like the coaches uh, that are here at this coaching conference. So, um, yeah, definitely a, a case of the drive, but then also I, I want to, I'd like to keep going and, and push on further. Yeah. Two last questions, sir. Uh, I don't know whether you're aware of the fact or not. Indian club Kingfisher East Bengal signed a move with Leicester City back in 2000, and then it didn't uh, work out to be precise. So, if an Indian club wants uh, you know, tie up a, a more somewhat uh, a technical uh, contract with uh, Leicester City. So, are you guys ready to offer that? Again, that's probably a little bit above board for for me, but it's um, it's something that I'm sure clubs are open to in that side of, in the, in that 
kind of things. A lot of teams have sister clubs in, in different countries. Uh, we've just acquired a team in, in Belgium. Our owners have, have, have purchased a team in Belgium. Um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good move for, for teams in India to, to try and create those connections with, with teams in the Premier League. Um, and equally in other leagues as well um, to get that exposure and whether it's go over and, and um, train in the same facilities at times and have the same kind of uh, values and that sort of thing. I think it's a, it's a good um, suggestion and a good opportunity for clubs to go and do that sort of thing. Last question. As a sports scientist, would it be your note of advice or prescription for the young players in India who are trying to become uh, professional footballers and want to do something special in international standard? Um, yeah, I'd probably say... If, if, if you're a young, a young player aspiring to, to get better, obviously play as much as you can, learn in terms of uh, technique and tactics, all those, all those important elements. But from a sports science perspective, I'd say do your best to read up on the, um, the reasons of why strength is good for, good for you and how it's going to affect your performance and improve your performance. And the same with power. That's two of our kind of pivotal um, aspects of what we do is, is the strength and power of, uh, of our players and I think for players coming up through the, through the ranks a lot of players are always really fit and they can run for 90 minutes, 120 minutes and uh, especially when you're young you're able to do that but as you grow up and you start to become into um, through adolescence and, and reaching puberty and then working on to adult games, you need to be strong and you need to be powerful. And I'd say that that's something, from my point of view, would be a, an important aspect to, uh, to work on and develop. Thank you so much. Hope uh, all the viewers who are watching this have been enriched by your Nobel Awards. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for, thanks for the time. Hit the subscribe option and the bell icon to get all the exclusive sports videos on Extra Time.